Walking is one of the most natural activities for humans. We're born to do it, but many of us struggle to do it comfortably. Today, I'm going to show you some quick tips and some short exercises that you can use to walk more comfortably and with better balance. If you're new to the channel, I'm Dr. Todd Martin, creator of The Walking Code. I'm a family medicine physician. I've been in practice for the past 27 years, but most of my movement knowledge came from 30 years of teaching dance and more than a decade of practicing Tai Chi. Walking issues span every generation. Young children suffer from issues like in-toeing, out-toeing, or toe-walking, and a variety of other conditions that need addressing. Many young adults have pain in the front of their knees or in their heels with every step. Other young adults feel socially awkward because of their posture or the way they walk. I hear from them in my comments section all the time. After age 40, people start suffering from conditions like chronic back pain, plantar fasciitis, knee arthritis, hip arthritis, even shoulder tendinitis. All of these problems have a root cause in improper functioning of the body when people are standing or walking. Sure, sometimes there can be an acute injury that causes pain, but for the vast majority of patients that I see who are suffering from chronic pain, an injury was not the root cause. On this channel, I try and focus in on helping people correct that root cause of poor posture and walking technique. And today, I'm going to do that by giving you a quick tip on how you can channel the motion of your arms to better understand your own walking technique and to improve it. If you're familiar with my channel, you'll know that I usually focus in on how to use your core to walk properly. But that can be a challenge because understanding one's core can be quite difficult. Fortunately, the arms are connected to your core, and it's a little bit easier to see what the arms are doing and then channel that motion back into your core. I remember when I was an early Tai Chi student, my instructor would come over and start repositioning my arms and hands after a movement. And I kind of wondered why he was doing that since he was teaching me that the movement and the placement of the arms was coming from the core. But after further consideration, I did realize he was being practical because it's almost impossible to readjust somebody's core. It's much easier to adjust the arms and hands into the right position and then have the person start to learn how it feels to move the body into that position naturally. So that's what I'm going to be working with you on in this video, how to channel the simple arm swing back and forth when we walk into your core to improve your walking technique. Before we get started, if you enjoy this video at any point or you've enjoyed my past videos, please go ahead and click the like button and subscribe to the channel if you're not already a subscriber. Also, I want to let people know of different ways to support the channel and get more information. On my channel, you can subscribe to the new Walking Code online course. You can also sign up for the Walking Code archive, which has all of my back catalog of YouTube videos categorized so they're easily accessible. That is free of charge for the first 50 people. So if you are watching this video the day of release, there are a few spots left open. After that, there's going to be a very small monthly charge for that subscription. Finally, you can get the Walking Code ebook, which I will link in the description section. Of course, you can find all of the links I just mentioned in the description section of this video. Now let's go ahead and get started. We'll begin by looking at the position your arm should be hitting relative to the leg movement. Then I'll give you some simple exercises you can use to correct your arm movement and bring that movement into your core. First, let's examine the visual details of the arm swing when walking with optimal form, so you can check these against the way your arms are swinging. If you find your arms are swinging different, that's a good indication that there's an issue with your walking technique that you can work on improving. Number one, reciprocal arm motion. The arm should swing forward on the side opposite the swing leg. The arm should swing forward at the same speed and to the same angle as the opposite leg. If the arm swings faster and higher, this can indicate that you're pushing off the ground the wrong way. If your arms swing lower or slower, it could indicate a slouching posture and inadequate core rotation. If your arms are swinging forward with the same side leg, then you have a much bigger issue, but I rarely see that happening, except when people are first trying to think about the way they walk more consciously. 
Trying to coordinate the arm swing consciously can be challenging at first, but it will soon become second nature with some practice. When the arm drops backward, it should drop at the same speed the leg goes back, and it should drop back level to the body, not be thrown backward behind the body. Next, hand positioning. The thumbs should face directly forward as the arm swing. The palms should face the side of your thighs. If your thumbs are facing inward and your palms backward, that could be a sign that you're slouching, or more commonly, it can indicate that you're walking with duck feet. Next, the angle of arm swing. The arms should not swing at an angle, either away from the body or across the body. If your arms are swinging across the body, it can indicate poor balance and ability to transfer your weight fully onto one leg. Now let's begin the exercises. For exercise one, we're going to simply practice walking. I want you to begin walking normally, and after you hit a normal and relaxed stride, place your attention on your arm swing. First, is the swinging directly forward with the opposite leg? Is the swing relaxed, or does it feel like you're throwing the arm forward or backward? It should feel gentle and relaxed if done correctly. Is the arm swinging up to the same angle and height as the opposite leg? You can judge this while walking. You can confirm this by shooting a video, which can be more accurate. Next are the thumbs facing forward as the arm is swinging forward. Finally, is the arm dropping back even with the body, or is it flinging back behind the body? For exercise two, we're going to do some conscious correction. I want you to walk again, but now focus on walking at a normal pace on level ground, intentionally facing your thumbs forward with each step. Try gently and purposefully swinging the arm forward with the opposing leg. Focus on ending the arm swing at the same arc as the swing leg, in the air, and then begin bringing the other arm forward while bringing the heel down on that same side. The heel that you're standing on shouldn't come off the ground until you begin moving the arm on the opposite side forward. Finally, focus on beginning the arm swing closer to your core, not the shoulder. Pitch the arm forward like you're trying to project it from the bottom of your rib cage on that side. Make the motion gentle and purposeful. We're gonna finish off with an exercise that you can do either with a pole or with a door jam in your house. But before we do that, I do wanna point out one other way you can support the channel. That's by going to the walking code store beneath the video and picking up one of your walking is man's best medicine t-shirts. That is a quote from Hippocrates and it's very meaningful. You can also pick up a walking code mug or a variety of other items. So let's go ahead and jump into the exercise. We're gonna begin with one palm flat against the pole, and we're gonna bring the leg on the closer side of the pole forward. And we're gonna bring the opposite arm forward, and we're gonna have them at a little bit of an angle like this, but the arm and the leg should be at exactly the same angle and make sure your thumb is facing forward as you're doing this and your foot is facing exactly forward, not turned out or turned in. From the side view, we're gonna do the same thing, making sure the leg and the arm are at the same angle, thumb facing forward, and we're also gonna make sure the posture is very vertical. You can think of a string pulling up from the crown of the head, elongating your posture, and keeping the pelvis level so it's not either pitching forward or pitching back. So we're gonna practice standing in this position and see if you can feel that and get accustomed to how that feels in your core. Now what I want you to do is an exercise to practice feeling some of your muscles in a different way. I want you to activate your gluteus maximus in the back. That is a very strong muscle, but a lot of people misuse it when they are walking, and this exercise will help show you how. So as you're standing here, 
push back against the ground with your gluteus maximus, and this is what should happen. You'll pitch back. As you do that, you're gonna notice that your leg will swing, but your arm, if you're nice and relaxed, is not gonna go anywhere. And that's because your glute max is not powering your leg swing when we're walking normally. Now what I want you to do is you're gonna feel this a little bit more exaggerated by hinging at the hip and then doing the same thing. Activate your glute max in your butt and push against the ground and you're gonna see what happens. You're gonna get this tilt of the body. Not a natural leg swing. Now what I want you to do is stop focusing on the glute max in the back and I want you to focus on your lower abs here on the right side, the side of your standing leg. Of course, you're gonna switch and do this on both legs so you're symmetric, but for right now we're standing on the right leg and I want you to take the lower abs and I want you to pull up on the lower abs. Instead of pushing off the floor, we're using the lower abs to pull up on the spine, pull up on the pelvis. If you pull enough, you should feel your pelvis get into a neutral position. Now, for those of you who might stand with an anterior pelvic tilt naturally, you might have tight hip flexors and tight lower back muscles. It sometimes can be difficult to get the pelvis into a neutral position, but you can practice that trying to tuck under and if you are flexible enough, your pelvis will get just to this neutral position and not beyond it. And then what I want you to do is what you did with the glute exercise, hip hinge, and then use the lower abs instead of the glutes to tuck under. And what you'll notice with that motion, as opposed to the glutes, it brings you into a neutral position. It does not pass this neutral position at the fully activated tuck, this is as far as it goes. It's not gonna cause you to pitch back like your glutes do. So practice that action, tucking under from the lower abs. You'll also notice if you do this correctly and keep your arm nice and relaxed, the arm is going to flow with the motion of the lower abs and exactly parallel the motion of your leg. That is the activity of your lower abs that we're using as soon as the heel hits the ground when we are walking. I'm gonna show you the whole swing through beginning from when the previous heel is off the ground. So we're gonna start with my right leg forward and I'm going to begin to toss the ball with the right arm, thumb forward, and that is gonna bring the heel down. Practice going back and forth. As the right heel comes down, as I start to swing forward with the arm, generated from here, that is gonna cause the left heel to come off the ground. So practice that. Begin it with the arm, and then connect the arm to the core. And see how the left heel naturally comes up as the forward heel hits the ground. Once the forward heel hits the ground, that's where we're gonna activate that tucking of the pelvis using the lower abs, and it's gonna get us to here and then lift forward, like you're lifting the leg and arm together. In the walking code, I often use the mantra, turn, tuck, lift. Turn is that motion that's gonna bring the arm forward. Turn, tuck, lift. Turn, tuck, lift. Practice that motion. That is the motion you're going to use as you're walking, placing the heel, tucking the pelvis and then swinging through, and then we just switch sides. Turn, tuck, lift, turn, tuck, lift. That should give you a very natural 
fluid arm swing and body motion and leg swing that doesn't crash into the ground with each step. When you do it this way, you're gonna feel that your gait is soft and gentle, caressing the ground, not beating down hard with the heel, which a lot of people experience. Once you get it right, you'll never go back to the other way that you may have been walking. The other issue is the whole duck foot motion. If you can get this arm swing going fully and activate the lower abs while you're doing that, that's going to help you prevent the duck foot positioning of your feet. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you have clicked the like button and subscribe to the channel if you're not already a subscriber. I do look forward to seeing you in my other videos and also with the Walking Code Archive. If you sign up for the Walking Code Archive or the Walking Code Online course, please drop me comments within the archive or on the course because I will always prioritize responding to those. Have a great day.